Hey, hey, good morning, everyone, or afternoon if you're um, if you're in a different time zone. It's eleven thirty for me. It might be twelve thirty for some of you out there, or who knows what time you're watching this. Um, happy Friday, also. Can you believe it's September already? Um, neither can I, but we're here. It's late. Um, I have a four day weekend, which is nice. Some people do have things like that too. So um, we're celebrating, getting ready to. Well, we're not, we're not doing much, honestly. I'm just glad to be off for. A few days and kind of spend with the family and catch up on projects and things like that. Uh, it's also Bandcamp Friday, if you didn't know that. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you've probably heard of that. But just a refresher for anyone, um, the first Friday of every month, at least for the rest of 2021, I'm not sure how long we'll do it, uh, at least to the end of the year, the first Friday of the month is Bandcamp Friday. That means that Bandcamp, where I have some more audio chapters for Factory Heroes available, if you make any purchase from the today, Bandcamp waives their fees or their share of the purchase so that the full amount um, of the purchase goes to the, to the artist directly, excuse me. So I have portions of my, of my book up there, um, significant portions of Fractured Heroes, um, both books one and two at fracturedheroes.bandcamp.com. And it's all free or name your price. Um, but today only, I mean, you can name, name, name a price anytime. You can download it for free anytime. But today, if you name any price, the full amount, goes to me directly so if you want to support an independent author and i used to say new dad i, I now the little guy's one now so I'm not, I'm not sure how long i can call myself a new dad but still support an independent author and a working dad then um this is a good way to do it any price you give you know if you, give, you want to give two dollars twenty dollars whatever um or if you want to download, download for free that, that still helps me um this, this still helps me get the word out and things like that but um Today only, name any price, the full amount goes to me, Bandcamp waves their fees, so we're making a thing of it. Um, you can download from factoredheroes.bandcamp.com, I'm not sure if I said that already. Um, the link is in the video description and the event description too, but just in case you missed it, it's fracturedheroes.bandcamp.com. One more time, fracturedheroes.bandcamp.com. So in honor of Bandcamp Friday today, and in honor of you being here, watching and listening, I'm going to do a live reading from the story in just a minute. Um, to give you a free sample of the content that's out there. And if you like it and want to hear more, you know where to go now, factoredheroes.bandcamp.com. I've been, um, the last couple of Bandcamp Predators, I've, I've been reading some, some portions from the story, uh, and I'm, or from, from book two, which is what I wrote, wrote recently. I mean, well, recently, I, I finished drafting it earlier this year. I mean, it's not polished and edited, but it's, but it's, it's got a full draft. I, I do think it's a better full draft than my, original full draft for, for, book, for, for book one, but um, still needs some work probably, but um, there are some sections that I think are decent enough to put out there. So I have significant portions on on, on this website, not the entire book, because I don't, don't want to give the whole thing away, but significant sections of it are up there. If you're interested in the characters of the story, you want to hear more. Um, so the last couple of times I read from the first couple of chapters, I'm going to read from chapter three today of book two. It's still early on, um, so you haven't missed a lot of plot. Um, the heroes in chapter one stop the bank robbery by some powered crooks, so like re recurring secondary villains who they've run into a couple times now. Um, they learned the villains are working for someone else, not sure who, so it kind of getting get the impression that there's that, that there's more to this than just a simple bank robbery. There's there's, there's some larger plot behind it. Um, chapter two is a flashback chapter, so um, so it's a, it, so it was more, more for character development for plot wise. You didn't miss a lot. Um, if you want to go back and hear those, um, you can check out my, er my earlier live videos. Um, I'll, I'll be posting those podcast episodes after a while, too, and my Fractured Fiction podcast. Or also, again, the audio content is available, fracturedheroes.pancamp.com. Um, so I'm going to read from chapter three today. It's called Team Meeting. Um, the heroes, basically, af after, um, after what has happened in the bank robbery and such, the heroes have a meeting to discuss the next plan, um, the next steps. Um, and if you didn't know, like, um, this just kind of a purpose, if you've never heard any part of my story before, my heroes aren't like the Avengers or, or, the, or the Justice League in the sense that they have, like, you know, this billion dollar headquarters. Um, these are like middle class working people, 20s and 30s, who just have, um, just happen to have powers, or one of them doesn't even have powers. She's, she's, a, she's just a vigilante. Um, but they meet in one person's apartment. So this is going to seem like four regular people talking together. But they are superheroes talking about superhero stuff. It's just they're you know they're, they're not like Avengers level um, where they have all, all the high tech and cool stuff. But um, 
here they are. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna read the whole, the whole chapter. Um, it cuts into the middle. Uh, the whole chapter was, was a little longer. Um, and um, yeah, there's the, um, so this is following some conversation um, that, that that they've had that that um, some some relationship sections. Robbie and Maria who are dating kind of had some talks, um, almost a fight, not quite a fight, maybe a misunderstanding about some issues in their lives. And before this, they saw Hope with her new boyfriend too um, at the college campus. The, again, those sections are online if you want to hear them on the link I keep giving you one last time, fractureheroes.bandcamp.com, if you want to hear the full chapter. But I'll, I'll pick up in the middle of chapter three where the meeting action actually starts. So this is, this is um, chapter three, sorry, Fractured Heroes, book two, chapter three, in the middle of it. Um, hope you enjoy. Again, if you want to hear more more of these characters, you know where to go. But for now, just listen and hope you enjoy. <clears throat> a minute later, Hope arrived. Sorry I'm late, she said. Got held up a bit after class. She sat down in, in a rec recliner adjacent from the couch and shifted to face her three teammates. Maria had set herself up straighter. Great, everyone's here. She leaned forward to address the group. First order of business, Drake. How are you doing? Huh? Drake said. Uh, I'm fine. I'm good. How are you? Maria rolled her eyes slightly. I mean, how are you feeling? You got hit yesterday, remember? Drake started. Oh yeah, duh. But still fine. Like I said yesterday, I don't think he hit me as hard as he could have. I'm good. Marina nodded. Okay. She tilted her, her head toward him. You didn't seem like yourself yesterday. Drake scratched his head. What do you mean? You've tussled with Scott before, Maria reminded him. I know you can hold your own. Yesterday you were a lot quieter than usual, like your mind is elsewhere. He, and he took you out right away. She looked directly at him. So please, be honest with us. I want a real answer. Are you all right? Drake took, took in a breath, then leaned forward as well, half facing Maria, but half trying to face the rest of the group, and thus not making direct eye contact with, not making direct eye contact with anyone. Um, yeah, you're right. I was distracted. I mean, seriously, I am okay. It's not a big deal or anything. I just had something going on, else going on yesterday. Hope looked at him. Is everything all right? Hope, I just said it for like the third time that I'm perfectly okay. You know that when you're distracted, you endanger the rest of us, Maria asked him. We're a team. We all depend on each other. If we can't count on you in the, out in the field, then we've got a problem. Drake nodded. I know. I'm sorry. It won't happen again, I swear. Maria looked like she was about to, to continue chastising Drake, but Robbie squeezed her hand a little more tightly and she let out a breath. Okay, I believe you. We're trusting you, Drake. He nodded once more. She turned again to the whole group. Okay, so here's what we know so far. Four superpowered crooks tried to rob, rob the bank yesterday. Victor Kirby, Veronica Byrne, Eddie Cole, and Carl Scott. In the past, they've often worked with three other super crooks. Jesse Maxwell, Ollie Conway, and Dylan Simonson. All seven, seven of them are part of Ben Atelier's crew of powered thugs who we faced down at the warehouse last year. But this time, at least, it was just those four. When no interjected, she continued. I did learn from Bruno that they have an employer. We don't know much more than that, though. Hard to say who they're working for, or if the rest of their usual crew is in on it. Is this something you think we should bring in Norman for? Robbie asked. I mean, if someone is running up the super crooks and having them pull jobs? Maria shook her head. I don't think so. At least not until we know more. I'm mostly just speculating here. Right now, we don't know this was anything bigger than an isolated crime. But you think there might be a bigger endgame, Robbie finished. She nodded. It's certainly a possibility that we can't rule out. She looked around at the group again. But I'm trying to stick with just what we know for now. Kirby and Cole were apprehended and no goods were actually stolen from the bank. Scott managed to escape. And actually, it's sort of burn. Really? Robbie asked. How do you know? The bar was buzzing about it at work last night, Maria explained. A few of the, well, low life, for lack of a better term, had even heard from her that evening. Drake's public spoke up, spoke up again. Well, that's not surprising. How would they even hold her? I mean, can't you just phase through anything, really? That's her power to phase through solid matter. After last year, they made a special electrified cell for her, Maria reminded the group. She could pass through the walls, but not without getting zapped with 10,000 volts of electricity. Robbie nodded. I remember hearing that, but then how did she escape? So they said she woke up in the police car and got out, Maria explained. She never made it to her cell this time. Dang. They've got to get a, a, a portable version of that electrified cell. Maybe some cuffs or something? It's a possibility we could mention to the police, Maria agreed, or to whoever supplies her tech. Um, I have a question. Hope said hesitantly. Maria looked up at her. How exactly did Carl escape? 
I was trying to tend to Drake at the time, so, so I didn't see. He went out through a window, Robbie explained. Right, I know, Hope continued. I mean, well, don't take this the wrong way. I'm not judging at all. But she glanced at Robbie. Like, couldn't you take him? You're stronger and faster than he is. I, Robbie answered, well, yeah, normally I could have, but he, he glanced at Maria. Scott shot a laser burst at me to distract, to distract Robbie, Maria explained. He knew that Robbie, 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 Robbie would choose to save me rather than go after him. And that's when he escaped. Okay, Hope nodded. Again, no judgment. I mean, that, that was totally, totally the right call, Robbie. Oh, I know, Robbie smiled. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. But, Hope's eyes narrowed. How did Scott know that Robbie would save Mary? Robbie glanced around again and put his hands up in a half shrug. I mean, I save people. I'm a superhero. That's what I do. I think, I think, I think people know that, right? She means, supplied Maria. Does Scott know that we're a couple? Oh. Robbie looked at her. No, I mean, I don't think so. How would he? You've been careful, right? Well, Marie nodded. Pretty careful. We know the risks. We know we don't need all of our enemies knowing things about our personal lives that they could use against us. Still. What are you saying, Robbie asked. Do you think we slipped up? Not necessarily. If we did and someone learned of our relationship, I think we'd find out pretty soon. You're probably right about Scott just knowing that you would save anyone. But we need to be careful and always on guard, at least while in costume. He turned to Hope. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, said Hope. You're not mad? No, answered Maria. We've got to consider every variable here and stay on top of everything. That's how we win and keep winning. Definitely, Hope agreed. Or Hope nodded. Glad I could help. Drake spoke up. Spoke up. Any word on Scott's whereabouts? The others all turned to look at him. What? He asked with a shrug. I'm kind of itching for a rematch now. Marie took a breath. Actually, yes. He was apprehended last night and is now in police custody. The thing is, how do you know that? Robbie asked. I went out early this morning and talked with Officer Hardwell on third shift, Marie explained. He's usually friendly to helping our team, even if some cops aren't. I just wanted to confirm what I heard about Byrne, that he had other intel, too. Wow. Robbie said, shaking his head lightly. He turned toward Drake and Hope, but he gestured in Maria's direction. Isn't she great? Getting up early and being on the job while the rest of us are sleeping? I'm proud of you, babe. She squeezed his hand in an affectionate reply. Wait, you didn't know that? Drake asked, turning to Robbie. Robbie looked at him quizzically. Didn't know what? That she had gone out this morning. No, I didn't. She sometimes, sometimes she goes out before I get over here in the morning. Oh, said Drake. I assumed, I thought. He lowered his voice slightly, but everyone in the room, room could still hear him. I mean, are you not usually here through the night, like, together with her? A fist-sized orb of golden light energy suddenly hit him on the shoulder. Ow! Oh, Robbie laughed nervously. No, um, I haven't, I mean, we haven't been... Can we focus, please? Maria asked, audible impatience kicking into her normally steady tone. Sorry, Drake covered promptly. Yes, said Robbie. Focused. I totally am, am focused. Maria cleared her throat. Good. Because I, I need you all to listen. I wanted to wait for everyone to be here before sharing this. Hardwell told me that Scott had been beaten, apprehended, and left for the police by night terror. Robbie did a double, a double, a double take. Drake's mouth widened. Hope neared her eyes at Maria. The, the room was silent. Night terror, Robbie repeated, but he's, well, you know. You can just say it, Drake told him. Dead. He's dead. Yeah, Hope put in. We were all there when he died. We went to his funeral, Drake asked, added quietly. So how could he, Hope asked. I know how it sounds, said Maria. Believe me, I had all the same questions that Hardwell told me. We know that terror is dead. So did the police and the criminal underworld. It was all over the news last year. Remember, there was that big upsurge in crime and people found out. So if Scott said that there was night terror who beat him up and brought him in, well, I don't think he was just talking out of his ass. Hardwell told me this wasn't the first sighting of him, of him either. Meaning what? asked Robbie. There must be someone running around either dressing like, like or claiming to be night terror, Maria explained. Are we sure it's so impossible? Maria looked at him. What do you mean? He gestured out toward the group. I mean, I can lift a car. Hope can fly. Drake can shoot fire and ice out of his hands. We live in a world where impossible things happen. Can we be absolutely certain that it's not really him? Night terror doesn't have any powers, Drake put in. That we know of, Maria added, but I'm with you on this, Drake. It's far-fetched at the very least. We saw his body afterward. Not to dredge up paper memories, but he was sliced open from chest to waist. Nobody could, could have survived that. You're not suggesting he actually could have come back from the dead, are you? Hope asked Robbie. Robbie shrugged. I don't know. Not necessarily. Probably not. 
I just think we should consider all our options at least, just like Maria was saying. Maria wins the usage of her real name. Hope glanced at Robbie with a puzzled expression. Drake asked, If it is him some, somehow, then why hasn't he tried to contact us? I mean, he was always a bit of a loner, wasn't he? Robbie asked with another shrug. Drake conceded, conceded with a nod. I still say it's more likely just a copycat, said Maria, but you're right. We do want to consider anything. Or, sorry, everything. Any other possibilities we can add to our list? Nobody spoke. Okay, Maria continued. So we've got a group of powered robbers with a mysterious employer, and it sounds like we've got, we've got a ghost to track down too. Suggested courses of action. Drake had gotten out his wallet and was glancing at a wrinkled piece of paper. I still got his info. Night terrors, I mean. Well, Wayne Murphy, that was his name. We had talked to his family, see if any of them know anything. Yeah, Robbie agreed, and maybe some of us should look around at night and see if we can find him, then get some answers. Regarding the robbers, said Hope, maybe we could track down their, their old partners, see if they know anything? Maria nodded. All good ideas. I was thinking along the same lines. Okay. Preferences? Let me go look into night terror, said Drake. I want to know what's going on. Yeah, said Robbie, and I'll go with him. Maria looked up at him quickly. Really? You want to go with him? Robbie took in a breath. Uh, yeah, I think that would... But usually you and I go out on patrol together, she pointed out. Hope addressed Maria. Hey, it's okay. You and me can team up to track, to, to track down the other crooks. We'll have some girl time all to ourselves, right? And Maria glanced at all of them, her gaze lingering on Robbie especially. Um, yeah, sure. If that's what everyone wants, then I guess that's fine. Drake shrugged. I'm good, good with whatever. Robbie nodded a sheepish sheep expression on his face. Okay, Maria exhaled. Then we'll, I'll go out tonight and see what we can learn. Hopefully in Ford. Wait, tonight? Does it have to be? We don't really want to film this too long, Maria said. But there is something happening behind the scenes, and we've got to find out as soon as we can. She looked at Hope. Does that work for you? Hope sighed. Yeah, I was supposed to have date night with Zach. But you're right. The city comes first. Tonight is our best bet. I'll figure it out. Great, Maria announced. Then it sounds like everyone's got their teams and their missions. We'll reconvene later. Everyone be safe. And good luck. End chapter. Okay, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed that snippet. Hope you're enjoying the dialogue and the character interactions and everything else going on um, with with these characters. Again, if you want more, especially if you want more context or want to know what happens next, audio chapters are available. Fracturedheroes.bandcamp.com I said that several times today. That's probably the last time I'll, I'll say it in this video. But um, thank you for watching again. If you, if you, if you go all day long today, um, and d download the chapters, name your price, name any price, to download Factor Heroes audio chapters. The full amount goes to me directly. The link is in the video description. Okay, one, one more time. FactorHeroes.bandcamp.com. Um, if you want more info, there's the event page. Um, and if you want more updates from me, live videos like this, or writing tips and other author content I'm putting out, you can click on the, on the, on the Chipper Maker link. It's there in the video description. Sign up for my mailing list, and you won't miss an update. Thank you all for listening. Thank you for being here and supporting me in this venture and just being a fan and a friend and um, supporter and everything else that, that you guys do. I appreciate it so much. Um, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Labor Day. And um, I'm not sure what else to say. Keep writing and reading and rocking. I'll see you later. Bye, everyone.